the iodine pro data 48 terabytes fundable storage solution is now shipping and we were curious to see how this crazy fast monster in capacity m.2 nvm express ssd solution can contribute in enhancing our daily editing routine Since having the Iodine Pro Data 48 terabytes in house, I was breaking my head in regards to how to share my excitement with you guys about working with this storage device. After all, it is easy to excite users with showing beautiful images coming out of cameras and lenses, for example. But here, with this kind of device, where do I begin? Well. I could have talked and show graphs with numbers of data transfer rates, but at the end of the day, I thought that what really interests us as users is to find out what the iodine device brings to the table in terms of daily usage. Before continuing, it is important for me to say that this fast and big in capacity 48 terabytes fundable storage is not for everyone. Depending on what you do and how your editing workflow is, be prepared to pay 17,500 USD for it. But if you are after the same exact solution or speed performance and a reduced capacity is an option for you, Iodine offers a 12 terabytes Pro Data for 3,950 USD and a 24 terabytes device for 7,500 USD. Now, with the price being out of the way, I can't stress enough how my editing workflow improved while working with the Iodine Pro Data 48 terabyte solution. Being a run and gun documentary filmmaker who is occasionally editing my own footage too, I'm perfectly falling into the target group of this device, but more on that a bit later. I just want to properly introduce the 48 terabyte Pro Data first. It weighs 3.3 kilograms and has an almost similar dimension size as my 16-inch MacBook Pro laptop, just thicker. In any case, I found it very easy to put it inside my backpack and take it with me whenever I need it. There are eight 40 gigabits Thunderbolt 3 ports. Those can be connected to one or more computers or other devices and accessories. The device can be configured to be used with different RAID options. I chose RAID 6 for maximum safety in case that something goes wrong as I cannot afford losing any footage. By the way, one of the advantages of working with a 48 terabyte device is the ability to configure it on RAID 6 and still have enough capacity to work on projects with a big amount of footage. Oh, and don't look for an on-off switch button because there isn't one. When you connect it to the outlet, it powers on and stays like this at all times. Okay, I hear you asking when and why will you be using such a device. Let's start with the why. Simply put, if you want the feeling of a complete freedom when editing high resolution, high capacity projects, this is a great solution. We all know that from that point onward, since cameras are getting more and more advanced with recording codecs and resolution, we will always get more footage to edit. Top this with solving some bottleneck issues that most of us have with our computers or accessories, this solution with a five gigabytes per second data transfer rate can surely help. When it comes to when to use it, I can surely identify three solid scenarios when using large VFX files, when running and gunning and then editing, or when there are projects to share between the entire editing team. Personally, I can easily relate myself to the run and gun documentary filmmaking scenario, because back in the day, I used to work for some leading broadcasters and I could only wish for having the iodine pro data with me, knowing that I barely have capacity restrictions and I can edit the footage in real time in full resolution. Plus, being able to share it with the director or producer to view it in all of its glory is beyond having a good feeling. It is almost a must. The other scenario is dealing with collaborative projects, which fits perfectly to what we do here at Cinedi. And covering exhibitions is a good example. 
up to four users can be connected to the 48 terabytes per data simultaneously. For greater speeds, each computer or laptop should be connected with two Thunderbolt 3 to the device. Now, we can create up to 15 different containers where each container is related to a different project. When one of the team members finishes to work on his or her part of the project, he or she can simply hand it over to the next team member to continue working on it. By the way, you can use Thunderbolt 3 cables in up to 50 meters without losing any data transfers speed. When working in a team, please be aware of the following. Because of some restrictions, multiple users cannot access the same container. Also, the size of the container should be defined beforehand. Iodine is currently checking the possibility to adjust the container size on the go, which will of course contribute for even greater workflow possibilities. The installation of the device is very straightforward, but I would like to share with you two tips that might be helpful down the road. One, on older MacBook laptops, please connect the ProData to two different Thunderbolt ports, one on each side of the laptop. This will ensure maximum data transfer rates since on those old MacBook Pro computers, the two ports are sharing the same data transport bus. On M1 laptops, you don't have to worry about this as each of the connections can work in full speed. The other thing is maintenance. The Iodine Pro Data is designed to be repaired by the user. It is very easy to open and replace the 2.0 NVMe SSDs if needed. Of course, no device is perfect, and if I may suggest, I would have liked to see Iodine considering the following with their next generation of products. Add a built-in CFexpress slot to the ProData itself in order to save a connection to the computer port and make the footage transfer from the camera to the storage device for editing even faster. Also, consider splitting the location of the in-out ports and locate them on both sides of the device. This will allow easier accessibility at times. A smaller and lighter device will be welcome, of course. That's it. That was our Iodine Pro Data 48 terabytes review. And in all honesty, this is one of those rare cases that I'll be terribly sorry to see it goes back to the manufacturer, simply because I got so spoiled using it while editing during the last few weeks. Oh well, it is what it is. Thank you guys for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.